verse 34 to 36. Chapter 22, 34 to 36. And the word of God reads this way. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greater commandment in the law? I'm going to keep going to 46 as it is written. And verse 7 says, verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, Lord thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? Is he? Then say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, How then do David in spirit call him Lord, saying? The Lord said unto me, My Lord, sit thou on my right hand, till I make thy enemy thy footstool. If David didn't call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer a word. Neither dare durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. First Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm just going to journey on this two. First Thessalonians chapter two, one through eight. I'm not using any notes today. You know I'm flipping through my Bible. I'm on old school today. <laughs>
Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains we are brought forth, or ever so hath formed the earth. And the word, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art sovereign. Thou turnest men to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carried them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourished and groweth up in the evening. It is cut down and withered. I pray the blessing of God's word to you, and that is the reading of God's word. God. The Lord God has given me a word today to preach as a testimony to you. And it's coming from Genesis. Many of you probably have noticed that I'm in uniform today. Some of you have seen a certain ring I used to wear when we first met. Uh, God has really been moving and working in my life. And I just want to stand before you as a testimony of God. If you turn to your Bibles and you just mark it and read it when you get home. It's coming from Genesis chapter 41. And I'm going to read verse 40 until the Lord tells me to stop. The word of God said, Thou shalt be over my house and according unto thou Shall all my people be ruled? Only in the throne will I be greater than that. The Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, it, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And the Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and, and put it in Joseph's hand and arrayed him in, in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, bow and knee, and he made him rulers over all the land of Egypt. And the Pharaoh said unto, unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnathanah. And he gave him to wife Adashanah, the daughter of Pharaoh's priests, on him. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. I'm going to stop right there. Today is a very honorable and special day in the Lord for me. As I was preparing to prepare a sermon last night, as a matter of fact, this week, for some strange reason, I quit. Yesterday, I had my grandson with me. He's only almost a year old. Now. He was just full of energy, and I hadn't seen him in a while, so he was crying a lot, and I couldn't really talk to him. I thought about every Saturday, I couldn't write a sermon. And I was reminded that the sermon already ended. I don't need to write anything, because he already prepared everything I need. And I just looked up to God, I said, Lord, I leave it in your hands. And this morning he gave me a reminder of where everything that transpired. You see, 
see, I, I come to you as a humble man. You knew me as a young man from Petersburg, growing up in my house last week. And you see me where it is, and you say, I'm doing good. But you know my story, but you don't know my story. <laughs> and the story is, when I was 12 years old, my grandmother told me that I was going to be a preacher one day. My, my uncles and uncles looked at me and said, one day you will do great things, you're going to be a preacher. But I never really understood. Didn't. And, and as I grew older, I didn't want the job, but I knew it required one. And you know, I figured I wasn't smart enough. I was a C average student. I always had to fight my way up and down out of fast street. <laughs> Getting in trouble all the time. Guys want to bully. And yet, I was able to graduate from high school. And I always wanted to be an officer. I always wanted to be like my dad. Because he always worked hard. And I said, I want to do just not just be like my dad, but I want to be better. And he always installed that upon me. Be better than me, son. Do things I couldn't do. So I went to college, Virginia State University, and joined the RCC. And I enjoyed it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put it for branch infantry. And I want to be better than the West Pointers. So I enlisted into ROTC and at the same time joined the Army Reserve as an infantry instructor. Doing two things within the Army at the same time. And then later on, got to obtain a scholarship. Didn't do as well as I was supposed to, but I did enough just to get by. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. Even with a scholarship, sometimes we make mistakes. I didn't graduate. I didn't graduate. Got married too soon. Went out to duty as a second, even got commission, second lieutenant. Well, that's good. You got your commission. You're a lieutenant. What, what you worry about? I didn't graduate from college. That's what I'm worried about. At the time, my wife wasn't faithful. I just tell you like it is. And neither was I. I made some mistakes in my life. From bankruptcy to total bankruptcy. Couldn't be focused somehow. The devil was just playing with my head so much I couldn't be focused at all in the lessons. So I dropped out again. I'm just telling you to test my story. Just like Joseph. Joseph, he, he, no matter what happened, he get ready to, there's always somebody pulling him down. And then God, then I just told him to turn my life away from God. Despite what my grandmother taught me, I figured I'd just do what I want to do. Drink as much liquor as I want, hang out with the thugs, hang out with the boys. Then all they want to do is party, and that, and that just wasn't me. But all in all, despite all that, I stopped some of the things, I still was falling. Lost my commission, got a bit depart from active duty, lost the best thing job I ever had. Come back to Petersburg without anything. A failed marriage. And now I'm homeless. What am I going to do now? Slept in my car. That was the only thing I ever owned. Go back to Virginia State where everybody knows me. A lot of my frat brothers know me. I was a Persian rifle at first, before I became accused. Went to my frat brother, go by um, Daniel Jim, just to take a shower, and go back out looking for a job. And you talk about job my hard today, it was just as hard as it was then. Yeah. I had 90 college credit hours, and I still couldn't get a job in the next I couldn't turn my job. That's the only job I could ever find every day was a bag of food line and working at Triangle Dodge. Y'all remember Triangle Dodge as a car washer. 
abusive relationships of this kind was me. I wasn't the abuser, I was just getting beaten up. And I had enough. And I remember before, before O.J. Simpson was arrested. <laughs> but I have a beautiful daughter. She's 19 years old now. And God is restoring our relationship. I made some mistakes. I knew it. Some opportunities just didn't come my way. Like some people went straight from college and just done it was successful. Kept moving up. Mine, here, there, and everywhere. Back down, back up, back down. I can never get above more. I don't know why God possessed me to share all this, but he got I have to tell the story. But God had a purpose in my life. He introduced me to a beautiful woman named she. A godly woman, not just anyone. I was still in the reserve. I could, yeah, I like you. Still in the reserve, lieutenant, got first lieutenant, and my commander, my company commander, and my battalion commander said, Lieutenant, what are you going to do? Are you going to go back to school and finish? They know how dedicated I am. They know I love the Army. But apparently you don't love the Army enough to finish your degree. I started getting letters from the Department of the Army. Either you get your degree or we're going to say goodbye to you. And you know how it is when you twice, twice pass over to promotion to captain, they let you go. Yeah. Well, before that happened, I kindly so I had my commander to discharge me and put me back in civilian life. That was the last hope I ever had. That was the only last good job I ever had. And now that was gone. So all I had was this mediocre job, whatever I could get. But I thank God for that woman right there. She stuck by my side. I used to go out there and do construction work, come home dirty and tired, working with the cat camera. For five bucks, six bucks an hour. And yet that woman would prepare a hot bath and a hot meal for me and treat me like I was gold. Even though I had nothing to offer her. It's just like this God is just looking at me and saying it's time to rise and raise me up. After a while, we started going to church. I started attending church, but one time I didn't want to go. And I'm trying to be as brief as I can, but bear with me. Then one more Sunday morning, I said, can I go with you? And then later on, as God showed me his word, and I learned his word, he gave me inspiration to get back on track. Then I just started studying the word. And of course, I've been to different denominations, different Pentecostal, from Pentecostal to Baptist to to even to, uh, I want to become a Mormon. I didn't know where I wanted, which, where I could find God. I want to go somewhere where I could feel like I'm part of something. But God had a different plan for me. He allowed the devil to torment me some more. And then at one point, I looked at God, I said, I'm ready to give up. I was turning and tossing in the bed. It's like 1996. This is after he came to me in a vision that he was going to set me the way he wanted. And then one that one day of the Sunday, I was taking my suicide. It wasn't a Sunday, it was a Saturday. We were invited to a, a, a church, uh, I can't remember the name it was, a church program. And I didn't have no intention of going. But I got up and I told God, I swear to God. Sometimes we just got to stop, look, and surrender our cares to God. Because when I surrendered, I was sitting in a pew just like you. And when the pastor, Opened the door for the church. I stood up, walked right, right there, and asked the Lord, Pastor, Pastor, how do you know you need your call? And I look back and like, all the stuff I went through, how do you know that you were called? He came down and brought a whole bunch of ministers there. And they prayed with me. And I now I got right there. I know I don't look good. I know I was all teared up. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> and I accepted the call. That was my grandmother's prayer. And 
And I know God will use me. And then I thought, wow, I start growing in the ministry. I start learning what God, what God really wants me to do. And I was enthusiastic about it. And I got enthusiastic about the words of one I was learning, reading that in the Bible from one course, front page to the next. There's not a thing I didn't learn. And there was always something new I learned. And you know what? I got these, as God showed me, I had to learn more than just, just Bible study Sunday school. I got to go to school. Yes. But first, I got to finish what I left off. So my wife and I, my wife, and my, my wife encouraged me. I went back to Virginia State to finish where I left off. And my wife and I graduated together. <laughs> May 2002. And at that same time, I was in Little Road in a biblical college studying God's Word in principle. At the same time, I was doing double work. I was determined. I was determined. God has grace in my heart to seek He first Him. And that's all I was doing. Whether I be a pastor or not, all I want to know is God's Word. No, I want to know Him. So I started going to school. My job situation got better. We own the house. Then the devil attacked again. We lost the house. Had to file bankruptcy. I'm just telling you what it is. Yes, I done it. Lost the car. You know, when your job, you can afford it today, but you can one paycheck away from being homeless and loaning nothing. Joseph had a good job. You remember in Genesis that he was working in the prison. He was, no, correct? Take that back. Let's go back a little bit. He was working in the captain's house. And he was doing real good. He was giving additional responsibilities. He was learning. He was smart. Yeah. And then the wife just got away. Right. Well, I'm going to sleep with her. And he said, I won't do it. And he ran from her. Yeah. Then she falsely accused him. Yeah. Have you ever been falsely accused? I've been falsely accused and lost again. But this time I wasn't alone. I know I had Jesus. And I know I had a helpmate that was by my side. Who was going through the hard times, the good times and the hard times. She watched me when I lost my ring. She watched me when I was sick in the bed. She watched me when I was just losing the game and even a decent job. She was there. But we maintain our household. We still have food to eat. We still have clothes on our back. Even in all the adversities we were going through, we still have the very necessity we need. Yes. I enrolled in a master's, pro another, a master's program, graduated from that. Then Brad went into and said, you know what? Why am I not to do what I'm on? Why I'm thinking about it? I want to go to, I want to be a child. God touched my heart to be a challenge to minister the truth. And I want to go back and back and do this. happened after 9 11. Two years later, I sworn in to join the Air National Guard. But I couldn't serve as a commission officer. It was too old. They said no. The Army said no. The Air Force said no. The Navy said no. I said, what? I'll tell you what. I'll go back as an enlisted. I can always retire as a first as a first lieutenant. That was my highest rank I ever achieved. Did three years in all active duty in the guard. And then my friend that I went to college with, who I got him getting in, now he's a, a lieutenant colonel here make full bird colonel. Because one time he was going for it. And I was in a position to help him at the time. And God helped me. That I reached out and helped him without looking for anything in return. He reached out and helped me when I couldn't help myself. And we spent three and a half years at Fort Bragg. And I earned two master's degrees when I was at Fort Bragg. I earned my disability when I was at Fort Bragg. I got promoted when I was at Fort Bragg. My life changed when I was there. But yet I was still not a free pastor in the church. I was pastor in a small church. That God led me to found. Still going through. Still working long hours. But my focus was on the ministry. Then God gave me another test. Come back home to Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> Right there in fourth grade. 
Allez, développe. 